I love when I hear that CPL song. Thank you so much for staying with us here on the Sports Max Zone. Well, what has been a remarkable 2024 for the island of St. Lucia got even sweeter on Sunday. This when the Kings lifted the Republic Bank Caribbean Premier League trophy for the first time ever in their history, beating defending champions Ghana Amazon Warriors in their backyard to do so. Well, just over a week ago, the Helen of the West celebrated their Queen of Track and Field, Julian Alfred, who returned home for the first time after winning gold in the 100 meters and silver in the 200 meters at the Paris Olympics back in August. Though these stories make the big headlines in St. Lucian sports, there's no counting out their success thus far in the CONCACAF Nations League, where they sit atop of Group B of League B, undefeated from two matches so far. The focus is on the Kings, though, and a legendary sports commentator. Joseph Reds Pereira joins us this afternoon to discuss the significance of their win in a year that has been special for St. Lucia. Good afternoon, Reds. How are you doing? Uh, watching your, your sports match show, of course. I can't watch anymore because it's uh, time to concentrate on your, on your questions. Good afternoon, Delance. <laughs> yeah, you can't watch it because you're now a part of it, Red. So lucky you and we're so happy to have you on the show. So let me first start by asking you about the mood of the St. Lucians. Now, I was there, so I got to, to see how excited and happy and, you know, everybody was having a really good time when Julian Alfred came home and there were so many different celebrations for her rightfully so but what's it like now being a St. Lucian knowing that guess what we have Julian Alfred with gold and silver and now we're the kings of the CPL well St. Lucia is on a high St. Lucia is on a high and as you talk to me the Piton boys are practicing for their two upcoming matches they're on Red? All right. All right. I think we lost Reds, and he was making a point about the country lands being on a high, and rightfully so. They have CONCACAF Nations League fixtures coming up on the weekend, and I know the people are going to come out to support because at this point in time, every St. Lucian believes that any sporting activity that they take part in, they're going to win. <laughs> and I can understand the feeling. Yeah, and you know what? St. Lucia, decades ago, had been a real strong force in regional football. But they had gone through a period where, they're not, where they're, they were not as, as good. But they are showing signs now of so, starting to resuscitate the, the game in, in the country. And as you just mentioned, they are doing well so far in the CONCACAF Nations League B, which they are leading in, in their group. So that is just one facet of the upliftment that the St. Lucians are experiencing at the moment with regard to sport. Uh, the St. Lucia Kings had played several of the matches in the CPL at home at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground. So they were a part of the championship run for this team. So um, while the title decider was played in Guyana, they know what it felt like to be a part of a team winning in St. Lucia. And it was good for them that the team could transition good performances when they left St. Lucia and had matches in TNT and Guyana as well. Yeah, Reds is back with us. Reds, you were making the point? Yeah, well, which point I was making, maybe Lance just made the point again about the Piton boys as well. But the difference with um, the Alfred homecoming, it was planned well ahead. Um, the Paris well, success was behind. The King's success against the Guyana Warriors in the final, brand new, fresh. They came home on the holiday. The Monday was a Thanksgiving holiday, and they landed in, in, in the evening on British Airways. Well, the social media has, has gone mad. Um, I was on, on the holiday, um, the day after the holiday, Tuesday. There was a talk show I was on for about a half an hour. 
talking about the impact on, on, on St. Lucia's cricket, on St. Lucia's sport. And the reference came again about the Piton boys, which probably is a little bit of extra pressure on, on them. But I don't believe that we have had a clear statement yet from the Honorable Kenson Casimir about um, what will be the, the celebration like. One of the things about a franchise that everybody doesn't belong to St. Lucia is like the Tala was winning, but it's only the Jamaicans who will come home. So there is a limit to how you know, wide the, the celebrations can, can entail, but I think uh, something is being planned and we probably will hear about it in the, the coming days. We are in the middle of a week. I don't believe another holiday is on schedule, but uh, it's a major boost um, for cricket in St. Lucia. Now they've got to take up the challenge, the Cricket Association, maybe get more red ball cricket being played. And I think all of the administrators are motivated uh, to try and reach the standards that Alfred and the Kings have set. Yeah, and you know, earlier this week, we actually got a comment from the Minister of Sport, Kenzan Casimir. We played that voice note on the show, Reds, and he basically just said that they are awaiting Johnson Charles to get back to St. Lucia. Uh, Johnson Charles had a minor uh, surgery that had to be done, so he came straight to Jamaica, Johnson Charles, that is, and he's getting that procedure done. And once he gets back to St. Lucia, then we get the announcement. So I think that's what's keeping that back based on the voice note that we got. Yes, I think it's, it's nice uh, that they are going to, they, they're going to wait until Johnson Charles comes back because he played a, a major, he played a major role in the uh, King's victory. Uh, I think it, it was known well ahead of time that one of the reasons why he was included in going to Sri Lanka is that he had this injury and Jamaica um, was planned well ahead of time. Nice to have, know that he'll come back and take part in the celebrations, whatever those celebrations are. Yeah, and Red, you mentioned earlier on, as we know that it's franchise cricket, and because of that, you know, there is not a heavy presence of St. Lucians in the in the roster. Uh, Johnson Charles, of course, but, you know, some of the key performers, Faf de Plessy, um, Norm Ahmad and uh, David Visa, non-St. Lucians. Um, given what you've seen from the fans, not only when they were there playing at the Darren Sammy Creek ground, but in the successes they have had otherwise, um, do you think, think that the St. Lucians have embraced the concept of franchise cricket? Well, I think they, 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 they have embraced it. They will probably embrace it even more now. And I think they are trying, trying to cope with the fact that the Kings are the CPL champions, you know. It's their second effort to win the title. And they have come a long way very, very quickly. I mean, Guyana had, what, five tries before they won the title. And it's good for the CPL that you've gone from TKR to the Warriors to the Kings. The pressure now is on the Kings 20, uh, 25 lands. Yeah. Um, Reds, when they were playing in, in St. Lucia, I know they had started um, with mixed results. They had won two and lost two from their first four. Um, at that stage, after four matches, uh, was there high confidence, as far as you can gather from the cricket fans in, in St. Lucia, that the team had a genuine chance of winning the title? Well, it was felt that the, the, the bad game against Guyana was, in fact, a one-off. Uh, they didn't handle the spin very well. And I think they quickly was able to put that be, sort of behind them, be, behind them. But one of the things of this year's CPL land, that it was predicted well in advance that the final four would have been the Warriors, DKR, Royals, and Kings. So the Kings were assured of a position in the finals, which they did very well in, as you know. They went straight to the final. They had three days uh, to practice. Any injury matters were looked at. 
they could relax uh, and uh, simply wait for the for the challenger to arrive and they are able to, to see the, the Royal Amazon Warriors and, and, and they can look at, at small little things that they could have worked on. Yeah, uh, Red's Darren Sam is coaching of this Kings team. A lot has been said about it and uh, he does have the reputation of being good with his people skills and man management as far as um, you know, guiding a group of players is, is concerned. Um, what, what, what's your assessment of Darren Sammy's role in this King's success? Well, he got the job coming from the Cricket West Indies to be the white ball coach. is because of that same personality you just referred to. But I think that um, he is a good driver of confidence. I think he's gotten them to believe that they could do well. And uh, I think he's also had lads, a pretty um, a good good lineup of players. I mean, Noor was a brilliant, a brilliant signing, you know. David Weiser has played uh, a part in the, in, in the Kings uh, that maybe he hasn't got a, 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 any credit for. But Sammy is a personality. Sammy is a personality, and um, it, it, he is kind of, you know, really overwhelming um, the, the the confidence of the players. And um, you know, it's it's Sammy time now. I mean, you know, he, everything has gone very well for him. Everything he has done has, has started uh, to go, so to speak. Um, but uh, there's. Another job ahead as he takes the side to Sri Lanka. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Um, Reds, statistically, Johnson Charles with the bat and Noor Ahmed, who was player of the tournament with the ball, were key performers for the St. Lucia Kings. But it is very obvious that while they were outstanding, it was a team effort and Faf Duplessis' leadership and Darren Sammy's guidance that really got this job done. Yeah. What was missing, the, the dominance of, of, of Charles and the dominance of Duplessis as the, maybe the top openers in, in the competition, what was missing was a middle order. Um, and that came, came good in the finals because they had lost more against. Like the Amazon Warriors, they were in trouble. Uh, the run rate was, was climbing. And uh, you know the story, I think, uh, what we've heard um, is that um, Jones was so look, uh, you get a, 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 a move on. I think the word was have a crack or we'll, we'll have to retire you. And that inspired him to a really um, series of magnificent shots at the uh, Providence um, that virtually shocked anyone from turning the from so, uh, sort of uh, soaking up dot balls to all of a sudden dominating in two of us, which changed the whole dimension of the game. Yeah. Really, really exciting stuff, um, Rez. And as you speak about it, you know, um, I feel like I'm reliving everything that happened. It was such an exciting match, nail biting, if I'm to say so. But, you know, one of the questions that is on my mind, Reds, when it comes to the development of cricket now in St. Lucia, because whenever you win a competition like this, it, it, it reiterates, it reignites the reason, the passion for cricket. Do you think that now the government of St. Lucia will be doing a lot more when it comes to youth development and, of course, developing facilities for cricket in St. Lucia? Well, the conditions for cricket is definitely on the improved. But just to link the success of the, the Kings, what is going to happen when the 50 over is played in Trinidad, uh, people will as obviously assume that the windwards should be doing well. So there's a lot of uh, pressure um, to drift on to the actual windwards team when they go to, uh, to, 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 to board in Spain, because people are going to expect that they, they will carry the mantle into the, uh, the actual 50-over. Uh, um, and 
I would think they also will need to have a balance on how you, uh, you know, help the other sports uh, to also lift uh, themselves up. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a balancing act. I mean, um, St. Lucia is not an oil-rich country. They have to be very careful of uh, the de decisions they make in, in, in terms of how they spend the, the budget of the sport. But it's a good position to be in, to have an Alfred, to have a, a Kings, and a possible Piton Bear, um, <laughs> Piton uh, Boys, direction of apology. Uh, coming through with the football game on the 11th and the 14th. Yeah, well, Reds, I know it's a great time to be a St. Lucia, and I know you are also enjoying the success. I want to thank you, though, for stopping by on the Sportsmax Zone, and I'm looking forward to chatting with you again really soon. Just, just a word, Kelly. I picked my 11. Unfortunately, I didn't have Narai and Russell, so I was a little off your 11. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I was doing the uh, My 11 with my sister Karishma and we had a lot of back and forth as to why I included them. But that's a discussion. We're going to have to pick up Reds another day because it's exciting when you have to pick an 11, right? Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, you take care, stay safe, and we'll talk again really soon. Bye. Okay. Good evening to everyone. Thank you, Joseph Reds Pereira. They, of course, former cricket commentator. But even now... He is hot on the money. He knows everything that's happening around the world in cricket. And of course, we enjoy talking with him here on the Sportsmax. So, in break time.